Welcome to This Week with Sheriff Dave Phelan, a weekly program here on LSN Television. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners, and also our radio affiliates that carry us throughout Fairfield County and beyond, where we join special guests each and every week from the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office and community leaders. This week back by popular demand is Lieutenant Mark Churchill. Good to see you again. Well, it's good to be back. It's been a long week. It has a busy been a week. busy week, as always. Your weeks are always busy, aren't they? <laughs> they are. They are very busy. Typically, what uh, as uh, if you missed last week's program, uh, Lieutenant Churchill's our jail commander, oversees the entire operation of our jail. Uh, have what, about 38 employees? 30, how many employees do you have? I have 38. 38? Uh -huh. And they're spread among three facilities. That was a good guess, wasn't it? It was a great guess. <laughs> yes, okay. And I also have court security, too. So. Okay, so court security. Lots of things going on. Of course, it's a 24-7 operation, so you have 24-hour responsibility within the jail. Yes. What's a typical day for the lieutenant? Well, my days normally start out with trying to meet the sergeant that's on third shift. So he's getting off at around 8 o'clock, so I like to spend a little time with him talk to my day shift sergeant, see what his day's planned, how busy the court schedule is going to be for him, yeah. to see if there's a need for additional staffing. Uh, if, if that case, we'll call in additional staffing to help with transports to prisons or transports escorts to courts or medical appointments. Right. So there's a wide variety of transports. We do a tremendous amount of transports every day. Uh, then generally it's, it's check the mailbox to see what work is pending for me and right. uh, the one thing I enjoy doing every morning is it's called a daily events log is I get to review all the paperwork that my staff give me throughout the course of the day or actually previous day and I'd like to summarize it down and I send that out to my supervisors I send a copy to you and it includes what our current head count is so it keeps everybody up to speed on what's going on within the jail and the breakdown typically is uh, how, how many uh, male prisoners do you have? How many female prisoners do you typically have? Well, count, generally we have around 65 females okay. in custody, and then the remaining are males. And mm -hmm. right now we're averaging around 270, 275. And, uh, and what are some of the like social programs or some of the different things that the prisoners get while they're in our jail? Well, we have a jail ministry. They come in periodically throughout the week. A lot meet. of different jail uh, people in the jail ministry, isn't there? A lot oh. of different churches, uh, denominations, a lot of different things. And and, and we like to diversify. Yeah. Uh, and it gives the inmate an opportunity to, to see what maybe they, they will connect with. And we want them to connect with it. Mm -hmm. And we also have social services, which is like the reentry program. We have a teacher that comes in, does GED classes for the inmates. So if they want to take tests while they're in jail so when they get released they can take their GED and pass and hopefully move on to be productive parts of society. And you mentioned the reentry program. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the reentry program gives the inmates information about where to go for jobs, um, resume writing, uh, where to look for if they need health care upon release or if they right. need temporary assistance such as food stamps or, or whatnot. It kind of gets them where they need to go to get those resources. One of the things that I've heard is when a prisoner gets out of jail uh, many times they lack two things. They lack uh, a home and they lack employment. So those are, those are tough, tough obstacles. It is, and sometimes it's what brings them back. Right. So they're either committing theft offenses to, to sustain a habit, or they could be committing um, trespassing charges, like for a place to sleep if it's cold or inclement weather. So. Okay. And there's certainly a high percentage of your population that suffer from drug addiction or alcoholism. And we do offer Alcoholics Anonymous classes okay. and um, Narcotics Anonymous classes. Okay. Uh, those agencies do come in, volunteer their free time, and they'll meet with any inmate that wants to come out and participate in a group setting. And generally, we have a really good turnout. So they're, they're, all the programs that we have are very beneficial. Now, do most of the prisoners behave themselves? 
Yes. Uh, you, it's, it's like um, anything else. It's one or two people. Right. Are the ones that generally stir up a lot of the problems we have within our jail. But the majority of our, our inmates, uh, they comply. Um, they do what time they have and they, you never really have an issue with them. And one of the things I think that we've talked about many times is uh, we really try to make sure to make sure that our deputies are respectful to them, that uh, they, they are concerned about the well-being of the prisoners and I think that's one of the reasons we really don't have a lot of incidents of fights or violence or use of force in our jail. We have very few, and so I think it speaks volumes about the deputies and their training and their willingness to understand they're dealing with difficult people, they're dealing with people that are going through drug withdrawal, they're difficult, or people that really have not taken good care of themselves. You know, sometimes they're, they have a, they're in poor physical condition, and certainly they, many have uh, large histories of mental problems. Yes, and the important thing that I try and get my staff to realize is that we are there for their care and custody. We're not there to judge them on what offense brought them into the facility. Our responsibility is the care and custody while they are in our, cust in our, in our facility. The court will judge whether they're either guilty of the offense that brought them there, and if so, what their punishment will be. That's not our job. Okay. Our job is to make sure that while they're in our facility is that they're receiving their meals, they have health care, uh, and if they have educational, such as uh, GED, when they have social services or ministries. So. Right, right. So lots of good things going on in the Fairfield County Jail. Last week, I mentioned that uh, one of the areas of responsibility that you've taken on over the years has been involved in our firearms. Right. I am a firearms instructor with the office, so okay. one of my primary responsibilities with that, along with several other members we have, is yearly we hold two qualification times where we'll, every officer within our department has to show a proficiency on, on how they shoot their service weapon. And that's one of the things that we can help somebody with if they're having issues, but nine times out of ten, they don't. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of good people in our department that, that shoot very well. And tell us a little bit about some of the proficiency tests that they have to go through. A lot of the proficiencies have changed. This is the first year that we've had to go with the new OPATA standards. And a lot of them are timed. Okay. Um, they're using uh, divided attention, whereas there's some magazine reloads within a certain number of seconds or a certain number of rounds within a certain number of seconds. And the distance tends to increase as the time gets shorter. Right. So the further back you get, the shorter time you got. So. And I think a lot of things have changed over the years. When I uh, first became a police officer, we did a lot of distance shooting. We, we did uh, a, a, a lot of things uh, that really, in, in reality, most of the times when officers are involved in shootings, it's close, isn't it? It's not we're, uh, you know, 100 yards apart. We're not a <laughs> football field apart. We are right on top of each other in those type of situations. So a lot of it is point and shoot, uh, think quickly, uh, rapid fire, all those kind of things. And that's true. Most gun incidents occur within a distance of 10 to 15 feet, uh, sometimes shorter. Um, and a lot of the drills that we teach our employees is the ability to not not just stand in one spot. So if you're going to, you know, be mobile, you know, be able to be mobile and be accurate while shooting. Right. Because uh, we have to be accountable for wherever that round goes once it leaves our weapon. Um, we don't want it going 250 feet down and into the side of a house. Right. We want to make sure that when we fire a round, we're proficient enough to put that round where it needs to be. And that's to stop the aggression of someone. And the other thing that I, I think you've done a really good job on is the fact that there is state standards, but also uh, you do some pretty innovative things as far as uh, what happens if there's in a, you know, a few years ago we did it. You're in a car because a lot of shootings occur in a car. Uh, you're in a warehouse doing a check and then somebody comes out and surprises you, those kind of things. Yeah, Sergeant Collins uh, generally started doing these, we, we call them a, a yearly challenge, a range challenge. Okay. And we'll, for instance, like some this year's range challenge was um, the officer had to shoot six rounds from a fully automatic weapon into a preferred area of the target at a distance of 75 feet. Okay. So if you're not very proficient with this type of weapon, it's a little intimidating. Uh, and then you had to rest the weapon, run to another table, reassemble a service weapon, 
um, which uses fine motor skills. You know, they're already worked up. Right. So we're trying to get them to calm down, uh, to tune in on their fine motor skills, and then fire three additional rounds into a metal target and make it fall. Um, and you have to, and it's timed. We time you. Right. We, we put a, uh, I think the time we beat was 26 seconds. And that was from one of our SWAT members. Uh, right. I did it, and I think my time was 37. <laughs> but I still felt pretty good about it. And a lot of the shootings, like you hear, I've heard on the news, they'll say, well, a police officer shot the person five times. Maybe they could have just shot them once. But actually, when, when you're in those situations where it's life or death, one of the things we do is it's mo almost practice and it's almost instinctive, boom, 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 to take out the target if you think your life's in danger. Oh, absolutely. Uh, a lot of things we do is three-round bursts, um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, a lot of people might not believe it, but they wear body armor. A person that might be committing a crime offense could be wearing body armor. So firing one shot, you may not do what it needs to do. So right. we, we tend to train with three-round bursts, so it's a tack, tack, tack. Um, and we're, we're not shooting to... to cause this person to die you know our intent is to stop their aggression to immobilize them that's it and if it takes three rounds if it takes four rounds that's what it took so lots of good stuff uh, going on as far as the training and uh, we don't have a lot of time but you were also the uh, before you became the jail administrator you were in charge of our communication center and that was a great experience. Um, again, I worked with a, a great group of dispatchers, uh, civilian employees. They really uh, enjoyed their job. Uh, they had a desire to really want to help people. And that was what made them such great people to work with. And I've often said that to be a dispatcher, in my opinion, is probably the toughest job you can do in law enforcement. Oh, you're absolutely. multitasking, you're, you're talking to people, you're the first communicator, and with the with the mobile phones now, a lot of times they are. It's not the old days when you see an accident, uh, you pull off to the gas station, you put a, a quarter in the phone, you call us. Many times these people are right on the scenes. So, oh, yeah. so the dispatchers are talking them through all kinds of uh, traumatic situations. Oh, absolutely. With the telephone technology nowadays, um, we can zero down in on a cellular caller within. I think it's about 100 feet right. that we're going to be able to tell where that person's calling from. And in actuality, a lot of the calls that I've seen come in from cellular devices, I think it's much closer. I think it's 20, 25 feet. Wow. Amazing but. technology. Lieutenant, we're about out of time. Do appreciate you joining Thank us. You. Lieutenant Mark Churchill, our jail commander, has been with us for the last two weeks. We'll have you back here uh, in a few months to kind of update us as we get uh, in the process of building a new jail. So we look forward to that. I'd like that. Thank you. Well, I do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank the students here at Fairfield Christian Academy that put this program together each and every week, and J.T. Bertram and the gang, they do a terrific job. And certainly I appreciate the nice comments uh, that I get. I was recently at the uh, Fairfield County Fair a number of days and had a lot of nice comments about this program in particular. The clock on the wall says we've got to go until next week, same time, same place. God bless, and we'll see you right here next week. calls and he says he's dizzy and he's losing his balance. I'm like, Unc, you want me to take you to a doctor? He's like, no, I'm going to look up the symptoms. I said, your symptoms are you're dizzy and you're losing your balance. So he said, I can't get on the internet because my arm is numb. I said, well, use your good arm and dial 911. Stroke's no joke. If you or someone you love is showing symptoms of stroke, don't wait because it might be too late. Dial 911. Time lost is brain lost.